using an ice lure for open water fishing the way that Keith Cavias and Gary Parsons are using the Shiver Minnow is indeed a cutting edge presentation for walleyes. But the thick coating of zebra mussels on the bottom of this area of Lake Michigan is like fishing in razor blades. That presents its own challenges, requiring some further customization of both their line and their hooks. Oh yeah, he's got it by the triple grip. That's, that's why you want to use this style of a hook. Ah. Oh. Not in my hand, please. Yeah, that's, even with that that's flopping around, thing. look at how it, that that hook is just kind of curled right around into his mouth. What you want to do for these shiver minnows is actually change out this treble hook. When these lures were designed, they were designed for ice fishing, and those smaller hooks are great for that. But for this open water fishing, especially if you get around bigger fish, you'll want to have a, a bigger hook on there. I move all the way up to a number four triple grip. This is a you know black nickel one here. It's just your standard one that we use on crankbaits. The big advantage of a triple grip, first of all, obviously, is it holds on to fish better. We've learned this through the years running crankbaits that that little bit of an inward bend actually locks that hook on that fish's mouth. These baits with this big chunk of lead here, the fish like to move their head around and slap that big chunk of lead around. It can be a little bit of an issue losing fish. So moving to that bigger treble hook is important. But the second thing that we found with this triple grip, and it was kind of just by fishing it that we found this out, is because of that inward bend, when this gets down in the bottom near the zebra mussels or near the moss, that inward bend actually keeps a lot of that junk off so it keeps this lure fishing cleaner. So not only again a fish cleaner, but once you get those fish on, you got a lot better chance of landing them with that triple grip. Yeah, he's a pretty decent fish. <laughs> I would say <laughs> he's actually pulling so hard. <laughs> we got a little bit of weather moving it. Oh, he's pretty wild. <laughs> well, was pretty, I looked up like, what the heck was that? You know, it's bobbing so much, I hope it's not a Darn sheep head. <laughs> no, I think it's a walleye. It's got some steady pulls. I'd... Hopefully not too wild. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, there he is. Oh, well, it's a walleye. Definitely. Right. Here comes an excellent netting job. Yeah. <laughs> he says, not yet it ain't. He says, I didn't quite like what I saw up there with that big, wide nitro. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh, and he got off right then. <laughs> he wanted to Look sneak in. He wanted to sneak in under the boat there. <laughs> there we go. I like. I actually like when they get unhooked. I can grab yeah. him right away. Then he's a nice fish. Yeah, I didn't really get a good hook set. I actually hit him a second time a little bit right away. I'd, you know, he. I didn't feel that bite. He was just there on the hooks. Well, and that's how like 80% of these bites are. I mean, when, if people are expecting to feel a tunk or a tick, once in a while it happens, but most of the time it's just when you sweep up, yep. there's a little weight or presence, just follow through and hammer it these fish. It feels like the start of a snag. <laughs> hooks, hook sets are cheap, just whack. <laughs> just just Hopefully swale. the snag just starts swimming, right? <laughs> just start swimming, here we go. With their existing school winding down on bites, Keith and Gary switch back into search mode. Not too long you were just gonna really get dumped on here, but a lot of times right before those storms and stuff, the fish can be biting good, but we gotta find some first. But the incoming storm that Keith mentioned is moving in fast, and it puts a hold on being out on the water safely. This is a bad situation. <laughs> when your line goes straight up like that, that's electrostatic shock. <laughs> so they better bite quick here. While tournament anglers are no strangers to heavy winds or rain, it's the presence of lightning that is a little too close for comfort. Whoa, that was something. Pitching shiver minnows is actually quite technical. Not only the jigging action itself by watching the swing and all the things that you've got to do there, but the equipment itself, it's imperative that you use the right stuff. You're gonna to wanna to use a rod that's extremely lightweight, anywhere from six to seven feet in length. And by lightweight, I mean like a feather, because this is a physical technique. But you also want a rod that's got a stiff backbone, a little bit of flex in the tip for fighting big fish. That stiff backbone allows you to drive the hooks into the fish's mouth, even from a long cast. One of the things that'll help you also is the type of line. I like using Fireline Tracer. Keith likes Nanofill. But the one thing about these two lines is that there's zero stretch. So you can really sock the hooks to those fish, even from a long distance on one of the longest casts. On the end of the line, we use a 10 to 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. I like to use one about three feet in length. And then the business end is the shiver minnow itself. By using this setup, you've got the best of all worlds. You've eliminated stretch, you've got good backbone, and you can sock the hooks and get those fish in the boat. Hot 
topics, leading information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. Hi folks, Steve Miller here with Mercury Marine. And I want to talk to you today about one of the coolest parts of our new 90 and 115 four-stroke outboards. And that is the fact that we are the only manufacturer to offer not one, but two different gear case options to really help you maximize the performance of any specific boat you may have. So we've got our standard gear case, which is an all new gear case design with a very sleek, unique hydrodynamic profile to it with 15% less hydrodynamic drag, which is a fancy way of saying it pushes the boat through the water a lot easier. That will help your cruise speed fuel efficiency it helps your top end and your all-around performance and it's the perfect gear case for those 16 17 foot boats that generally lift very well all by themselves but then for those heavier boats 18 plus foot we've got a larger command thrust gear case we've taken the larger gear case from the 150 four stroke changed the ratio to a nice powerful 2.4 to 1 ratio and put it on the 90 and 115 as an option so now if you've got a boat that's quite a bit heavier has a little trouble lifting itself getting up out of its own way this gear case provides a lot more leverage in the water and a more lift to help get that boat up and moving the way you want it to the other benefit of the command thrust gear case is it gives you access to mercury marine's entire range of v6 class propellers which is unparalleled in the industry so for a standard gear case running a prop such as this black max right here you've got a great prop offering but with the command thrust you can upgrade to something like the inertia, which is a lot more diameter, it's a lot more blade area, and it really complements the larger gear case when you gotta get that boat up and running and to get it to really lift and handle the way you want it to.